Welcome to 3NN Podcast with your hosts with the most, Nick Tesla and Brian McFadden. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to 3NN, episode 29. My name is Nick Tesla. His name is... Brian McFadden. And we're here to let you know that nothing is impossible. I'm going to fucking keep just dying laughing every time i got to say that, Brian, because it just doesn't flow right. We're here to let you know that nothing nothing is impossible. It's just too serious. I don't know. Do it like the Conway Twitter. Do the NPR voice, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, we would just like to let you know that nothing is impossible on today's show. So, Brian, on that note, I would like to, I, I, I first would like to ask you, um, oh, do we have a call? No, no calls. Um, <laughs> I would first like to ask you, Brian, do you believe that there could have possibly ever been, or maybe even is now, or maybe multidimensional be- beings or something of that sort, do you believe there are any beings or people or anything out there living, whether it be past or present, that is about four inches tall? and human-like in shape and and stature. Are you referring to, like, a gnome or something like that? No, I'm referring to a more of a fairy. I don't believe in fairies, Brian. But there's some pretty, uh... I guess you can... You can find people out there that can convince you of almost some, some, some of the craziest shit in the world. And you can find some people that can convince you that they've really seen some fairies. And it's like, are they schizophrenic? Or have they really actually seen some shit that's going on, some interdimensional shit? Like UFOs and, and ghosts and other shit could be. You know what I'm saying, Brian? So, you know, they find, this, they find these little aliens sometimes. I'm pretty sure they found two aliens. I'm speaking a little too fast for the NPR crowd. I know they've found... <laughs> These little aliens, Brian, that are about three inches tall. Okay? Now they're three inches tall, Brian. Okay? And they wow. have little human three legs. Inches. Little human legs, little human arms, and little alien heads. Really? And they look like aliens, and they've been there's one been caught alive and another was found dead. But it makes you think, is there a whole little subculture, sub-civilization, living underground and shit. Oh, that was not NPR. It, it, we can censor that. Um, <laughs> Bleep! Is there a whole little subculture uh, or sub-civilization living underground of little mini three-inch tall aliens? Or are they just baby aliens? Most people assume that they're just baby aliens. But I, I see a little subculture, almost like the Smurfs, Oh. Um, in their own little world. Are they blue you know, like maybe the it's, Smurfs? But maybe it is, because the Smurfs are actually from another dimension. If you ever watch the Smurf movies, they're from another dimension. I have not. So, a, a alternate dimension to, uh, to Earth, a alternate Earth that is much more cartoon-like and Smurf-like. But maybe these little three-inch aliens are actually real-life Smurfs, and that's where the idea for Smurfs coming from alternate dimensions come from. I'm not sure there, Brian. I'm not sure. And on that same note, Brian, okay, because you didn't tell me whether you think they, they've ex- ever existed or not, do you? Do you, Brian? It's possible. Okay, all right, anything's possible. Remember what show you're on. Um, okay, on that same note, do you believe that I there have ever been, I would say, 100 feet people that have roamed the earth? Or one hundred foot beings, maybe you, Again, hey, it's you can think of but you can I think of human like creatures, alien like creatures, or even Cthulhu like creatures. There's many things you could think of. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Oh, Brian, dinosaurs roamed. Ro- I was about to say ruled the earth. I guess they did rule the earth at their time. Maybe In not, their day, maybe yeah. not politically I think or T-Rex economically. Was probably like the king, like the lion, is the king of the jungle. No, T-Rex no, was king no, of the turf. no. T Rex was not king of the turf. You've got to get up on your, your, your. What, what do they call this? Your Dina, Dina. All I know is I Dina want my own private army of velociraptors. Okay, now you're just sounding like a four-year-old child, maybe an eight-year-old child, but you still, you're, you're sounding a little immature because. Do eight-year-olds know about private armies? I don't think so. <laughs> You did not say you wanted a 
a did you say two velociraptors or I said I wanted a private army of velociraptors. Uh, velociraptors. Yes, I believe an eight year old may know what that type of private army is because he has been playing with uh army men for a good five years already. <laughs> so he might know what a private army is. You know? Oh. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh playing the devil's advocate as they may say. <laughs> But I don't want to play the devil anything. So fuck him. <laughs> All right. NPR, on that note, we Brian, don't curse. <laughs> on that note, Brian, our NPR segment and our NPR um, um, feel for the day is now officially over. Thank God. And we're back. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing today? This is your host with the most, uh, the, the real Dick Tesla, here with my, my co-host with the most, Brian McFadden. Uh, oh, my God. We're about to kill it today. We got some amazing topics we're going to bring you. This is what we're going to call our Techno Genesis episode. Techno Genesis. Techno Genesis. Techno Sega Genesis. Uh, techno Sega since there's no video, you guys can't see that Nick is doing a robot dance while he's singing. Yeah, everybody. I would expect everybody out there to really get that and understand that I am doing the robot dance over here while I'm sounding like a robot and singing like a robot. But anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on 3 at N29. All right, this is our Techno Genesis episode. Hey, we're almost at the big 3-0. Almost been on this whole podcast thing for three podcast decades, Brian. It's some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> anyway, Brian, if you want to check us out on Facebook, you can find us on Facebook.com slash 3NN Podcast. It's a great page. <laughs> you really want to check it out. Today's episode is going to be brought to you by Circuit City uh, d- 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 um, repurposing HH. H.H. Greg, sorry, 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 sorry. Brought to you by Circuit City. I messed up the whole thing. Hopefully I can fix it in post-production, but probably not. Uh, <laughs> brought to you by Circuit City. What was it, Brian? What was it? Repurposed H.H. Greg's. No, no, no. H.H. Greg's. Oh, yes, yes. Circuit City bringing you repurposed stores, now H.H. Greg's, that were once plugs as a scourge on the landscape or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it was funny before, but now we don't Oh, man, I nailed how. it before. I nailed it before, but I wasn't trying to do the voice before, Brian. And now that I'm doing the voice, it's really hard to do the voice and remember what the Circuit City catchphrase was. Hopefully, we'll still get our sponsor money from <laughs> Circuit City. Hopefully, everything's okay well, well, on the Circuit City front. Well, I, I hear through the grapevine, Circuit City's doing great. So through I'm- the grapevine... <laughs> I have a feeling Circuit City will be able to afford to pay us. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Our 37 cent check is on its way. Woohoo! Woo! Who, baby? All right, Brian, we got a few things to get into today, but I think you wanted to tell us about something the experts are predicting about technology. Well, they're predicting, sir. And who are these experts, Brian? These experts are. British scientists. Ooh. Yeah, they, uh, couple guys. Do I make you Randy? <laughs> really? Do I? Well, well, anyway, what they're predicting is... Should I talk British for the rest of the show, Brian? I think I very well may. Oh, Continue, no. please. Oh, dear. Continue to the roundabout. Oh, dear Lord. Well, anyway, Why? they're predicting that robots will replace 30% of human American jobs... Within the next, uh, uh, ba 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 ba. Hold on, I lost my train of thought. Twenty twenty five. Within the it's next in the years. title of the, the the it's in the title of the article, and he still couldn't find <laughs> where and when robots will take over our jobs. I had scrolled halfway down the article at that point. Well, robots are going to take our jobs by twenty twenty five, and let me. I guess I. I and that includes white collar jobs for all you. Uh, uh, white collar types out there. I would assume that's who you're talking to. But, Brian, I think when it comes down to it, this is really a good thing for humanity and civilization to move forward. I thought we you like- said you were going to be British. Oh, did I say I was going to be British, Brian? Yes, I believe we were changing from that voice to the I'm British sorry, voice. well, if I'm going to be British, I, I don't feel comfortable without some tea here. Um, <laughs> some tea Earl Grey hot. 
<laughs> no, 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 Brian. Well, the thing is, Brian, okay? No, when no, you have to be more forceful when you say it. T. Earl Grey. T. Earl Grey. Hot. All right. Now, Brian, what I wanted to try and tell you is, Brian, that this is a technological evolution. This is something that we should be looking at in an evolutionary manner. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. I want, I want to talk Brooklyn now. I want to talk like a, a meathead and tell you some truth with some meathead voice. You sound like a guy named Jesse that I used to know. Yeah, I used to know this guy named Jesse. He's a meathead too. Hey! All right, let me tell you this in my best meathead voice. All right. No, I mean, you really do sound like him right now. It's right. creepy, the let voice. Let me tell you about this, Brian. <laughs> let me tell you about this, all right? Robots going to take your job in 2025, all right? There's some jobs nobody wants to do. They say, oh, we'll give it to the Mexicans. Well, hey, that's not a funny thing to say because those Mexicans need work too. And they working hard. So don't say, oh, give you a job to the Mexicans because we don't like it. You know what? They'll walk hard and they'll do whatever they got to do to make their money. That's something to be proud of, not something to look down on. Anyway, what I was going to say, all right, Brian? What I'm, what, 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 what I'm trying to say here, Meatball, all right, is Meatball. basically that it's a good thing that robots are taking our jobs. The bad thing is that there's no new jobs being created or no, no new ways of doing stuff and making money that are popping up. So it's almost like these robots take jobs and it ends up with some dudes on the street homeless. Pretty much, yes. Foolish and homeless. Pretty much, yes. All right, I can't we need do, to do voices something about anymore. that. I can't do voices anymore. I, I, I get pulled out of the voice. Well, at least now I know I can't do voice acting because I'd get to a certain point where my voice would start going back to my regular voice and I wouldn't be able to help it. Um, good to know. The good thing here, Brian, is that there's technology. This could be looked at in a very negative light, and I think we touched on on brainstorming is how in Detroit fucking... Car manufacturers replaced human people with robots, but it was actually a good thing because it eliminated injury. You it eliminates that? injury, but it also eliminates a substantial part of the job market. Yeah, it eliminates a job. Trust me, I understand it eliminates a job, but I think if anybody watched the brainstorm episode, you're like, all right, enough with it now. But if you haven't watched the brainstorm episode, then basically the way I put it on brainstorming is we need to find a way to move past this system and find a way to either adjust the system or radically change the system so that as technology advances and makes the human life easier that jobs are not lost because technology is advancing okay it shouldn't be that human population must automatically go down or must inherently go down as technology advances because there won't be enough to go around or enough of this this wealth system that we have or enough of this this fake wealth that we've created there won't be enough of it to go around for for everybody to have a job because technology will have replaced and eliminated so many jobs but the technology has already mm. replaced and eliminated jobs and the jobless rate has not gone up to 50 percent has not gone up to 80 percent nationally or globally you know so well, globally you look at some countries that i don't know what the joblessness rate is glob globally so i guess we'll talk nationally but it's not at 80 percent you know jobs plenty of jobs have been lost due to technology but the thing is we've adjusted we've adjusted as, we, as we've gone along and people have adjusted but so has society and the system but I think as long as we have this system of a 40-hour work week and you have to earn a paycheck and, like I was saying on Brainstorm, it leads to, well, okay, well, you want a redistribution well, of wealth okay, or you want a redistribution of wealth. That's, I'm going to throw this out there. It's not just like jobs in uh, vehicle off the manufacturing line. No, it's jobs in every yeah. single Like, the, as the article facet. states, there's a bake bot robot. Whipping up fresh cookies at MIT. Hospitals are now employing medical robots to assist their doctors, and a robot named Baxter can beat any human at the popular logic game Connect Four. Here's where I think we really have to be concerned. And it's, I guess I'm assuming if it's 2025, if they're saying 2025, That's 10 then years. in five years, we should start seeing, okay? Now, we do see at some McDonald's, not many, to be honest, we got to be honest here, not many McDonald's. Not many. Are there the, the automated tellers or where you go up and you don't talk to a person, you order through a machine? Because it's hard for they, the machines taking cash. We're not in a cashless society yet or all, all credit society yet. So Mark of the beast! It's not the easiest thing for those things, those, um, those robots to take people's orders and take cash from those people. Okay, But 
when we start getting to the point where the back of the house jobs are starting to be completely automated by McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's, and even KFC and Taco Bell and some of your others, when you start seeing certain jobs automated, it'll only be a job at a time. It won't be multiple jobs at a time. Like I, I mean, it'll only well, be like a robot fry baker. cook or something like that, and the fries will just cook themselves. So. Here's a robot baker making cookies for you. Yeah. Robot Baker, exactly. Uh, yeah, think about it this way, Brian. You're saying, here's a robot baker making cookies. That robot baker ain't your average baker. It's still 100 times cheaper to hire yourself a baker full-time to bake yourself some or bake some, cook, some cakes and some cookies at your bakery than it is to buy that machine, install that machine, and have it fully set up in your, in your place. Because there's, there's a difference between manufacturing equipment and robotic equipment, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, that robotic equipment, it's obviously robotic equipment, but to the average yeah, they're carrying retailer, trays that looks like manufacturing file, huh? equipment. They're not trying. Any average retailer can get some manufacturing equipment and pump out their their batches of donuts by the masses, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, use automated machines, but it's better to do stuff by hand. So, but eventually we're going to start to move away from that. But... That is still looked at as something that's not feasible. Financially, that's not feasible for a bakery owner to buy that $250,000 muffin maker. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just not feasible. But when that thing's $10,000, you start looking at your you're paying this this other person $25,000 a year and you can buy this thing for $10,000 a one-time investment and it costs maybe $5,000 a year. Not in to a keep major bakery, bakers can make money. People that that do that for a living that bake cakes and went to school for that they can make boku bucks that machine could be yeah but that machine for for uh, I, don't, I don't know it's still a handmade thing though baking and shit like that that's still a handmade thing so i don't know if that's really the best example for them to be using on the site honestly because i don't know if like baking and cooking i don't know if that's really like that's why i say with mcdonald's wendy's and uh, burger king if you see them starting to use automated stuff because most of their stuff is pre-processed i guess you could say not pre-processed but it's it wouldn't surprise anybody not real it wouldn't surprise (laughs) anybody you walk into um the master um master cupcake guy or whatever i can't remember what his name is master cupcake or cupcake wars or whatever on Mm -hmm. tv you walk into that guy's baker and you see that thing uh pumping out donuts you're gonna be like yo whoa, whoa, whoa what's going on here yeah i don't want these I want the ones that you guys make by hand that are like specially made and they're like that's what you guys are famous for. I don't want that crap. You know what I'm saying? Like that's exactly. pre-made. That looks like it came out of a factory. I don't want some shit that came out of a factory. Now where that's going to help is people investment business owners who have money to invest in the shit can start up businesses now where they don't need the they don't have to worry about starting that business. I feel like I'm spitting all over myself. <laughs> they don't have to worry about They don't have to worry about Starting up that business. Don't worry, Nick. In, a, in, a, in about right 20 people. years, you'll have a robot that'll come catch the spit as it falls out. All right, Ryan, Ryan, I'm not. I, I, there was literally two little fucking little. I don't know if some, anybody's ever experienced that when you're talking or some shit. Yeah, a little I know what tiny. You mean comes like out off your tongue or like from the fucking back of your mouth or some shit some fucking crazy shit but that's what was happening to me brian it happened twice but you're right in the future there will be a robot that can help me with all my fucking issues but <laughs> with that robot i don't know the only the good thing is or not the good thing but what you'll see is you'll see businessmen who start a business whereas before you need to start that business and staff it with human beings who have lives feelings emotions and like what i mean by lives is like um, outside of work lives, yeah. they got the other schedules, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you got to find all those people nowadays if you want to start that kind of business or a specialty business or something. Whereas in the near future, in the next ten years, you're going to be able to start a business where you don't need to find all those specialty people. You get if you got the money, especially if you got the money, you buy your equipment, you buy the right robot. That thing knows exactly how to do everything that needs to do for that position, that job position, whatever. Whether it's baking donuts or laying bricks knows exactly how to do it and and it's going to over 10 year span you're saving a, a couple hundred thousand dollars on salary more than a couple hundred thousand dollars on salary cuz you bought that robot and in all reality is that such a bad thing it's not really a bad thing because if we try and say no 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 this is a bad thing we got to keep these jobs unless we agree unless we try and push for working side by side with them we have to figure out a way to not stifle it because if we say, oh, well, that's a bad thing, then we're kind of stifling it. And that makes that, that 
one invention could just be dumped down. Think about the, the water-powered car. How many water-powered cars popped up? And it's like, well, no, sorry, we're on oil. Sorry, even though that water-powered car is the way to go. Salt water-powered car? How much salt water is there on the planet? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Brian? I'm with salt you. water powered car? I'm with and, you. Uh, sorry, we're on oil. Well, that's kind of like the same thing as like, no, sorry, we're on jobs. Sorry, I, these robots and everything, it's cool that that is the way of the future, but sorry, we're on jobs. We're not giving up our jobs. You know what I'm saying? It's just something, something just doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way. I feel like a cat being fucking petted the opposite way from its tail to its head. Yeah. All right. That'd be awkward. More than awkward. Okay. Don't forget it. All right. Here we go, Brian. This one will jack your brain up like uh, like something. I don't know. It I can't believe we're a half an hour in already, Brian. Can you believe that? All right. Excuse me. That was disgusting. Nick. All right. Are we on the verge of surrogates becoming possible, even a Matrix-like second life program? There's an article on motherboard.vice.com. Motherboard, whatever. Um, scientists use virtual reality to teleport people into different bodies. Did you hear about this, Brian? I did not. Why don't you educate me, sir? I'm going to read just a couple of, uh, what do you call it, from it? A couple of paragraphs from it. And this is, like, remember, this is our technogenesis episode, but this is, like, crazy. This, this yeah, is even possible. If you can do this. All right. While surgery bots, this is, keep in mind, this is on uh, Motherboard. While surgery bots, like Da Vinci 11, are already mm-hmm. letting doctors perform surgery through machines, we could see humans teleoperating robots from greater distances in the near future. Say, for example, a doctor in London operating on someone in Mumbai or a human operating a robot on Mars. But what goes on in your brain when you're under the illusion of embodying a robot? In a study published today, researchers at Sweden's Karolinska Institute set out to answer that question by creating an out-of-body illusion where volunteers were teleported air quotes, into a foreign body with the help of virtual reality headsets. Brain activity was then measured as they experienced this illusion. This, is, this experiment is a brain imaging experiment. We're interested in the brain mechanisms that give rise to the feeling that you're inside your body, said co-author of the study and cognitive neuroscientist Henrik Ederson over the phone. The volunteers witnessed various hypothetical threat situations, such as being hit by a sledgehammer or threatened with a knife, both on their VR and real body. In the experiment, 15 volunteers were asked to lie on the bed inside an MRI scanner. They wore VA, VR headsets through which they saw a stranger's body also lying in the same room, being stroked by a paintbrush while the same actions were performed on their own body. This technique was similarly used in an earlier phantom limb experiment, which I've heard of plenty of times, what that's reminded me of, where a participant's real hand was stroked at the same time as adjacent empty space, an invisible hand, leading them to feel that the invisible hand was actually part of their body. Ooh. Yeah, the, the, the phantom limb stuff is crazy, okay? I'm only going to read a couple more paragraphs, but this is crazy. According to the lead author of this study, Arvid Guterstam, the brain merges the sensation of touch and visual input from the new perspective in a matter of seconds. This results in the illusion of owning the stranger's body and being located in that body's position in the room outside the participant's physical body, he said in a press statement. Erickson told me that the group were interested in uncovering two things. We firstly asked how the brain creates this experience of accepting this new stranger's body as your own. Because... It's the Matrix, son. Because it's the Matrix, son. Yeah. He said, secondly, we wanted to see which part of the brain gives rise to the feeling that you are, you are located in a particular place. I'm, I, I really sometimes cannot stand people who let their dogs out. You know they're home. Let their dogs out. And the dog's just like... Rah, 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 and they don't rah, do anything rah, to... You live in the woods. You live on a farm. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Your dog wants to bark. Let your dog bark. You know? You live in a like a suburban area with like a lot of people who live around you. It's fucking rude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not. It's not the worst thing in the world. Trust, trust me. It's not the end of the world. But you know it is the end of the world when it's fucking ten of six in the morning and you let that fucking dog out and it's going fucking nuts. That's fucking the end of the world. That's yeah. fucked up. And That's you know no no no. You know what the fucked up part about it is? My first instinct is to either scream out that fucking dog and tell it to shut the fuck up, and then I have visions of myself fucking strangling that fucking dog like I just want to shut it the fuck up. And then I'm like, That's so fucking wrong because it's not that fucking dog's fault, it's that fucking dog's owner's fault. You know what I'm saying? So fuck that dog's owner. Anyway, <laughs> to investigate how people experience body ownership and location <laughs> in space, Harrison and his team teleported the volunteers between different locations in the experiment room with the help of the mounted VR headsets. The Oculus Rift, dude, that, that, that gets a lot of people. You watch videos of people wearing Oculus Rift? They're, that gets a lot of people. Like, really gets them. Like, where they, they scratch at their face. 
they're like, oh my god, like they're they're not sure if it's even real, you know. And yeah. they're not like scratching, like they know. They almost like if they know they're wearing a headset and they realize it's virtual reality and they like they're not fully immersed in it. Oh shit, that's scary. You know what I'm saying? Pull the headset off your face. You're just pulling it off like you would pull off like a pair of sunglasses or something. But when you could tell they're really immersed in it and their brain has tricked them into thinking that what they're seeing is really what their body is experiencing, when something like terrifies them, they're terrified for a good like at least full second before their body is like, holy shit, I think this is fake. Like, it's not like, oh yeah, this is a virtual reality thing. Let me just take this off. It's like, holy fuck, like it's like so real that their brain is so convinced that it's real yeah. that they, there's something inside of them that by the time they realize, holy shit, this could, this is actually the virtual reality thing, you're just trying to rip it off mm. because it's like a whole nother reality that you've been fucking put in that's like terrifying, you know what I'm saying? Like this, trying to hit people with sledgehammers your first your instinct might be to like rip the fucking VR thing off. But what if you couldn't rip the VR thing off? What if your hands were fucking strapped down? And but you're watching a virtual reality body get smashed, but you're in the perspective of that virtual reality body and it's so lifelike you your brain is tricked into thinking it's you. That's what they did right here. Oh okay. I don't know if it's they did it with an actual virtual reality body or they did it with a remote body somewhere else or somebody else's perception in another room somewhere else. But it seems like it would be kind of the same thing. I, I think they might have done it with like a virtual reality body and the person's brain convinced them that that virtual reality fake body was actually theirs. And that really opens up the door to, well, are we a lot closer to video games where you not only strap on the helmet, but you're, you're able to... The video games have figured out how to fully trick your brain and take over your motor cortexes or your motor cortex or whatever so when you try and move your arms it's hacked into that and or it's looking for that it's sensing that in your brain so when you try and move your arms you're not actually moving your arms your character your character inside the game it's actually it like diverts that from heading down your yeah. spinal cord and going to your arms it pulls that signal and pulls it into the game while you're logged into the game that's some scary shit but that are we actually kind of we could actually be a lot closer to that because if your brain, if we realize that your brain is that easily able to accept an alternate reality and a whole nother dimension or a whole nother world that easily and that quickly, then the only next step is to hack the signals going to arms and legs and the rest of the body. Well, not even really the rest of the body, you know, just the arms and the legs. And hold on, haven't we already had prosthetic arms that people can move and yes. use like their own arm? Yes. And it's hooked up to their brain to where their brain sends the signals for that left arm or that right arm. So yeah, how far away actually, are we, Brian? Uh, that's how far actually away are the we? premise of the story in the most recent Call of Duty game. Oh, fuck your Call of Duty. All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is crazy. So it's, it's, uh, that's what, that's that what just happens gives, to the main character. That just gives Credence Clearwater to what I'm saying right now. Credence Clearwater. All right, that just gives Credence Clearwater Revival. to what I'm saying right now. That we're close. If they're close. touching on it, we're pretty close. Because they got the exoskeletons in there. And we're, that game is supposed to take place about 50 years in the future. I believe we are literally 10 years from at least half of the United States soldiers, if the United States Army or whatever doesn't transform into some weird homeland security slash United States Army slash weird shit. United right? Nations but, Armed Exactly. I don't, I don't even know. I don't want to like think of what it Federal is. Federal military police. But... I could really see half of our our militarized forces mm -hmm. having exoskeleton suits in the next ten years. Oh yeah, was, not in ten years, not in, in the next ten years, in ten yeah. years. It was also in that GI Joe movie, if you'll recall. Right. Well, they already have the technology. It's just perfecting it. It's perfecting mm -hmm. it and making it one affordable to yeah, manufacture cost and, and cost effective, exactly, and two mm -hmm. comfortable and able to be worn and used by every single soldier with absolutely no problem. And there's no chance of it injuring them. Or it's only a help, you know. Yeah, and easy to repair. And the sad part is, 50 years from now, you'll see that 10 years from now on like half the U.S. soldiers. And then 50 years from now, you'll actually see. And that's where we got to remember this technology shit is a good thing. You'll see it being able to help factory workers and warehouse workers who are might yeah hey you might be lifting a 75 pound bag or you might be lifting a 300 pound bag but you got this exoskeleton suit on and it feels like you're lifting a 30 pound bag 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fucking exoskeleton suit. And that's going to save people's backs. That's going to keep people from, like, wearing themselves out. Hopefully we can change the system. But if the system doesn't change, we got to at least make sure that innovations like that can make it to the forefront. And, and the cream of the crop must rise to the top. That kind of shit needs to rise to the top to at least help out the people that are working the hardest in this damn system. You know? Oh, yeah. Because think how much more production and manufacturing would get done. My back hurts, Brian. My back hurts. Oh, just I'm tired this, of this shit. Throw this exo suit on. Can I go 50 fucking, years in the future and fucking... I'm going to cryogenically freeze myself, and then they're going to wake me up fucking 50 years in the future when they have fucking... What do you call it? Exo suits. And I'm just going to go back to work and be like... I'm gonna, every no, place no, no. I apply, I'm going to be like, as long as you got exosuits, I'm down. They're going to be like, well, you need an exosuit license. And I'm going to be like, all right, where do I get an exosuit well, You have license? to make sure you go far enough into the future They're gonna have to where the forklifts. public can afford these Wouldn't exosuits. that be cool if they had exosuit forklifts? Where, like, mm-hmm. literally, like, you could have, like, literally a whole forklift thing, like, just on your chest. You know how the front of the forklift's got the shit, the forks that go up that and down and out and shit? You have that just on your chest, so it's like... You you walk up to something, you pick it up, but you're also you gotta remember you're seven eight feet tall because you're in the exosuit. Yeah. But you walk up to the fucking rack, put out your forks, drop down your forks, or extend them out, push them out, put them into the thing, lift it up, back up, like literally walk back out and walk that pallet where you need to take it instead of the whole forklift bullshit. That would be to ride crazy. It and, that I could and see forklift it, yeah. accidents and all that. Yeah, I could see that. That would be awesome. You Fifty could, years, man. Technogenesis. Dude, warehouses. Beep, 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 beep. Man, warehouses would be so efficient it's just about the and that would be great for cost. safety in a yes, warehouse that's what you won't have to maneuver this eventually like the cost the for a long time it'll be available for 20 or 30 years before most warehouses even start using them or for any warehouse even starts using them right but eventually the cost will get down to a price where it outweighs the cost of a real forklift the damage of no no not a real forklift the damage of overworked workers and injured workers and workers' compensation and shit like that. You're the the it'll get to the cheapness point where it's like it's almost stupid not to at least have half of our guys, at least our older guys, wearing exosuits so they don't they don't blow out their back and they're fucking out for six months or some shit or yeah. have to have surgery and this and that. You know what I'm saying? So and it's also the right thing to do. It's the right thing, but that's never the the business motive. Hence, why we need to move away from this damn capitalist system. Yeah, All right, so basically, I think I I wrapped I rounded that out really well of how they did that and what they did. I think I did. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Brian, can, yeah. Do you have that pulled up there? The uh, the threat. The, the I I do trio, have it pulled up. The trio, the trio, the trio, Brian. Hey, Brian, do you have trio pull up? Yes. Well, um, apparently. Tesla has unveiled a home. Did battery. I? Did I? No, I didn't. You hold did. on. Hold on. Are you kidding me? It's a battery, and it's in a home. That's my home battery. Even no, though it might no, say Kodak little, I think on it. It's a little bigger than that. Just a little, you know. Honestly, it's honestly really. I don't believe not that much bigger than that. Well, it's about um, the size of a security system uh, panel. If anybody knows what that is, not the keypad, the panel. It's like a box. It's about two feet by two feet, maybe one and a half feet by one and a half feet. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brian. Well, potentially, if you combine it with solar panels, it would uh, revolutionize how we power our homes and eliminate the need for those pesky electric bills. Do you see the electric bill, let's just say 25 years from now, do you see the electric bill being a thing of the past, almost like the uh, the, the, the landline phone line? Oh, hey, here you go, here you go. How about the how we look back at AOL and the hours and getting your discs of 1,000 free hours if you sign up today and, and the – Literal, when you if you remember the first early days of AOL, and you had forty eight hours a month or something, yeah, and you were like literally like pacing yourself and like oh I can't be on more than this or you know say I can only look at stuff for this long or I can only look at this many things and this and that it's like now we laugh about that now yeah. it's just like the goofiest funniest thing because we had to pay for the hours that were on the internet now you remember the old AOL the would dial be the up richest tone. company in the world all the internet companies would be the richest and <laughs> actually as a matter of fact I got something I got a little a little treat for you here Brian oh no uh, Nick has a treat ladies and gentlemen uh, I've got a little three I think this you. would be a great way to power our homes. I just don't see uh, the yeah. electric companies wanting us to stop paying them our electric bills. Yeah, but you know what? Eventually, you got to just catch up with the times, man. Eventually, you got to, and the electric company might find another way to, to 
maybe power commercial buildings or power government buildings or I don't know. Maybe the energy companies or the electric companies can find a way to convert their or divert their evilistic ways into positive ways of creating alternative energies like wind power and and basically finding ways to give people natural power, whether it be solar power, wind power, that they don't have to buy the generator or they don't have to buy the solar panels and the battery for themselves, but they can give people this free power that a lot of other people are getting for free at a very, very, very discounted rate because they're getting it for free themselves. But they got to charge you a little something because there's, uh, there's equipment that they have to maintain. It's yeah. just not maintaining the transformers and all this other fucking, all the other crazy shit that built up the power before, the power plants. Sorry, the transformers That's... and shit. I sound like a dumbass. It makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense. <coughs> Um, so I wanted to try, let's just see, I think that's it. Let's see, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Come on. I think that's it. He thinks. No? He thinks that's it, ladies and I gentlemen. I thought that was it. He thought. But that's that not it. it. Oh. Oh, come on. Think, thought, thought, think. Yeah, I don't remember. You think, therefore, you are. Well, that sucks. Well, you know what, Brian? That's oh 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 duh, duh. Nick had one of those moments, ladies Nick and gentlemen. Nick had one of those moments. And my Microsoft Windows three point one is up. Yay! You don't remember that sound from back oh, in the day? Oh yeah. Ding ding! I used to like the computer. Used to be exciting to me, like the, because it was simple. It was still simple, and it was still like I could I could explore the whole entire computer in an afternoon. And I was like, yeah, good shit. Ah, I know everything's going on. It's fucking awesome. I checked out these little, the stupid games, the cool games, the pinball, the fucking solitaire, the ski game, right? But it was so simple. It was so much fun to just, you knew what you could handle. You could choose from the 20 different things that you could do on your computer. If you got some computer games, maybe you got 30 different things you could do on your computer. But you knew the different things you could do on your computer. Nowadays, it's just like... My computer looks like a tsunami coming at me, and I have no idea. It's like even when I'm, like, in the thick of it, I just have no idea where to go next. It's just so much. And it's like it's the same kind of computer almost, you know what I'm saying? But there's yeah. the information level has, like, gone up by 100 times. Then from Windows 95, the stuff I, I, I used to have, Windows 95 computer, love playing on it. But the information level is 100 times more. So there's like literally I had 30 programs or 30 different things I could do. Now I have 3,000 different things that I could do. Literally. I literally have yeah. about 3,000 different things that I could do on my computer. Most people have maybe 2,000 different things with the Internet. If you have the Internet, you have around 2,000 different things that you could do on a computer. Or maybe 2,500 because there's at least 500 different things you can do on your computer. Well, back in Windows 95 days, there's about 30 things you could do. So it was like it's pretty easy. It was pretty simple. It was kind of fun. You were excited. You knew what you were getting yep. into. You knew where the end was. You know, it's like with the computers nowadays, there could be no end. You could be going into a black hole and just be getting you know sucked what? I'll in never for forget. five, six hours. Do you remember when you were in? And nothing gets accomplished. When you in that were five, in, six um, hours, you could have ended up looking at fucking kitten pictures. It might not have been. Might have been different for you, but Cinnamons and it was in middle school. You, we had computer class. You remember yeah, computer fuck class? Yeah, I remember okay. computer We're in computer class, class with Mr. I, th- I want to say it was Mr. Z- Zimmerman, Zeminski, something like that, whatever. Okay. But I remember there was class. one computer that was in like the back of the room that had this uh, this like really was the badass computer? Really low quality, of course, early generation Star Trek computer game. But was it <laughs> Hold on, what computer? What, but was that like the badass computer of the computer class? No, all the computers in the room were the same. It's just uh, this one had this Star Trek game installed on it where you could actually engage in combat. <laughs> what game was this? I don't recall. It wasn't Star Trek Final Unity, was it? Was it a next generation game? No, it looked more like the original series. Ah, uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of original series games. Some of them kind of suck, but some of them are pretty cool. This yeah. one, for the time, for being in middle school, uh, I thought it was it's cool. It's the first Unity, it's Final it Unity. Was early was computer generations. Game. I used to love that, dude. I, I, come on, that was like one of my 30 things that I could do when I got on my computer when I was fucking 12 years old. Getting on my computer, 11, 12 years old, getting on my computer. There's uh, 30 different things I could do, but I could play Total Distortion. That video game was where you like make your own music videos and stuff, and like explore this weird, creepy world and shit. Um, 
Then there was Leisure Suit Larry 7. That was always fun, you know what I'm saying? Baldies, yeah, Baldies was okay. I never really got into Baldies, but Bal I had Baldies. Um, I know my fucking video games, man. I know my, <laughs> my old school shit. But um, then, of course, what was the one I was just talking about? My my home base. I just like uh, the one we were just on, man. Brain just, fart. Just talking about it. Oh man, it was like my Star favorite Trek. game in the world. Star Trek, yeah, yeah, Final Unity. That was like my go-to game. But I kept, I got hung up at one point, couldn't get past that point. I figured out how to get past that point. And getting cheats or walkthroughs for games at that point it was just like. You probably had to go out and find a book or find the, the, the yeah, yeah, the book or the cheap book. I was buy the book 11 or 12, stores. it was DOS, it was Windows 95, you know what I'm saying? It was like, internet was uh, around, but internet was not like, oh, I can find cheats for this game or I can find... And also, we were still on, we were on AOL at that time, so it was like, I don't have the hours, I don't even have the permission. You had to get permission from your parents to get on AOL, and they had to sign me in and this and that. It was like such bullshit the whole fucking <laughs> beginning of the internet thing we have to make sure we we know what you're doing on there and this and that and we have to control it and this and it was like and then five years later it's like i do whatever fuck i want on the internet i'm fucking i'm the man i fucking i'm on the internet 24 7 because we had cable fucking internet you know <laughs> but when we had aol and we first got it it was always like oh there was like such a controlling thing and we're like we're not even teenagers yet so we got to be controlled like we're kids and it was always so like used to piss me off when i got time to play on a computer i would play my fucking star trek game i love that shit i don't even know where we were bro i don't even know where we were oh we were talking about the tesla battery the Tesla battery, I believe, 50 years from today, from this day right here today, the Tesla battery will have fully replaced. I remember, yeah, so that's what I had said, and somehow I got off on a tangent, but I was saying how the energy companies, they're not going to let it happen, but hopefully they can transition into offering people clean energy going forward, and not the fake clean energy, not clean coal or whatever the fuck you're talking about. I'm talking about wind power, solar power, and ocean current and... Uh, water current power. I don't understand why the fuck we don't use the oceans. We build piers, we build buildings out into the ocean. Fucking uh, the, Dubai built the fucking whole, has built islands out into the ocean. And we don't take advantage and build anything out there to harness the man made, not man made, the natural currents that are constantly moving. Not like they're, oh, well, sometimes they're moving, sometimes they're not. Is, is it really worth it? They're constantly moving. It's a constant flow. The fuck? How come we're not harnessing that? Oil, my friend. Oil. Yep. And, I, and it's like, well, let's, let's get moved away from that. But we're moving away from oil. As you can see, we're starting to slowly move away from oil. And I think once the younger generation comes about and the, 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 the kids who are five years old right now, when they're 55 years old, they're going to be looking at a completely different world where oil is just like oil is something used by mechanics to put in your in your car as far as your dipstick and your car needs oil if you got an old school a muscle car from the fucking from 2003 or 2005 you can you got to put oil in that thing but that's the oil that they're talking about you know what i'm saying that thing's already been converted over to the to uh, uh the cleanest the basically the water slash yeah, water and air as the, the fuel source, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you still pump water and air into the thing. You still pump water into it, and it's, it's fueled off, fueled by the water, but it still needs oil. Like, the rest of the engine is all the same. It's just, it's combustion is created from the water now. Or it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like the Audi thing. That's what I'm saying yeah. is Audi came out and said that they've created a new fuel out of a new type of di diesel fuel or a working diesel fuel out of air and water. So... All cars are going to end up getting to that. If Audi came out and said that, the future's here. Future's here, my friend. Um, future's here. It's the way that, of the future. That, as cool as that is, I still, when I was a little kid and thought of the future, I thought of, like, the Starship Enterprise. I thought of, like, um, the speeder bikes from, uh, from, like, a Judge Dredd or a Star Wars. Uh, you know, just, like... Nah. Cars flying like the Jetsons. Yeah, cars like. flying is it will be here. I think we have a a long way to go with when it comes to cars flying, um, because we really there's going to have to be a smooth transition. Maybe not a smooth transition, but there's going to have to be a transition from airlines and airports going from being commercial airports where people 
leave and, and, and fly on, on commercial airlines, they're going to have to be transitioned or built out or something to be turned into places where people can exit off of a highway and enter onto the Skyway. I like it. It's going to have to happen. Yeah. Because you're not going to, in order, so every, and you're not going to be able to land wherever you want. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have to be that way. Because otherwise, you're not going to, I don't under, I, at this time, maybe like with our, con, my constraints and our, our technological limits at the moment, it sounds like it's not possible, but maybe at some point it will become possible. It seems silly that I was even talking like this, but I don't see us being able to create lanes in the sky. I don't see that. Like Back to the Future didn't have lanes in the sky. They just had little like light markers, and it's like that's not going to work for us yeah. unless we got completely automated systems, completely automated planes, which if that happens, like we could see if they make automated self, like self-flying cars. They could that whole system could be up and running in ten fifteen years, but if it's not going to be automated and they don't, then they're already people don't rolling trust out that. cars that drive themselves with no steering wheels or yeah. brakes. Well, that's it, and I think that's also fifteen years from now, all new cars coming out. Fifteen years, not 15, not within the next fifteen years. Fifteen years from now, so on uh, twenty thirty, models will start coming out that drive themselves. And it's not, oh, well, it needs to be, it can only be driven on this type of road, this or that. The thing is completely autonomous and has almost its own brain as far as, like, it's got the three laws, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to, it's not going to disobey you or anything like that, but it's completely, it's more intelligent than you almost, you know what I'm saying? It's able to navigate and go where it needs to go, you know what I'm saying? Use the GPS and turn where it needs to turn, not get into accidents, like, like, avoid certain obstacles all that kind of stuff it's going to be able to do that better than a human and when it gets to that point people are going to want that new cars to have that yeah. but it's not at that point yet and it's not close to that point yet i think we're being misled to think that it's close to the point where you're, where self-driving cars are going to be on the road soon well no if it's not going to if it can't drive as well as a human and it can't drive on every single surface or like every road surface or every gravel surface whatever it is then people aren't going to accept it you know, people True. accept it as a nice little uh, niche thing for when you're on the highway. You know, but as soon like it's kind of like cruise control. It's just going to be cruise control where it handles the steering and braking as well. You know, cool. But you're not going to be able to use it off the highway. You're not going to be able to use it under seventy or under sixty-five or something like that. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Kind of. That's interesting. all just my fucking Tesla prophecy there. Like Tesla I guess that's prophecy. Tesla Domus there coming out. Um, and then last but not least, Brian, this is the one that I've been like itching to get to. Yes, been Make itching. Sure I have this one up. to get to, Brian. I'll just I want I'm gonna tell you what this what's going on here, and I want you to tell me what you really think about it. And give me timelines. I want timelines. This is our technogenesis, and we're trying to give people an idea of when this shit's possible. Uh, if you want to read the article, go ahead. But I didn't read the article. I just I've heard about this in the past. I've not really delved too much into it or looked too much into it, but I do know about this and I do know that it is similar. It is not the exact same technology described by Gene Roddenberry or whoever came up with the whole intricate system uh or explanation for the warp drive system in Star Trek. But it's very similar. It's very similar. It's basically the idea is you are not with this warp drive, right? Or the M drive, it's being called that NASA's coming out with. Um, and this, it is really crazy. It's some. It, it really makes you question, like we do a lot, question the, the nature and the fabric of reality in the universe. Um, what the M drive does, the M drive does. The M drive stays in one place and moves the universe around it. Which is exactly what warp drive does in Star Trek. It does, but if you look into the, um, what do you call it? Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not what it does. You're right. That's, I was thinking of the Star Trek um, description. <laughs> Thank you. But they're, very, well, they're very similar. Come on. Um, what M-Drive does, okay? M-Drive actually creates a suction in the vacuum of space in front of the vehicle that it's attached to creates a suction in the vacuum of space over and over and over and constantly creates a suction. So it literally pulls 
the ship through space by creating a suction. Almost think about it um, as... Like a tugboat? Kind of like a tugboat. Um, trying to think of, like, you know how suction works. Like, is... Yeah. Is... Basically, once you create that void, whatever's at the bottom of that void is going to naturally be sucked towards where the void isn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or towards uh, the certain direction or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking of like a, a soda bottle or something. And I'm, honestly, I can't even really think how to explain how I'm thinking of it. But basically, what it does is it creates a suction in front of the, the ship that it's propelling, right? And that's the way that it's propelling is it's creating a suction. And the act of that suction actually is is allowing the ship through that suction it's forcing the ship from space that doesn't have a vacuum to it does have a vacuum so it's almost pulled forward through that fucking vacuum effect or whatever right but what it's doing is okay. it's constantly doing that and there's almost no limit to how it's just going to constantly keep going faster it's going to keep creating that vacuum but as it's pulling the ship forward towards that vacuum that it's constantly creating in front of the ship there's no limit to how fast it can it can just keep accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating because the drive is not actually the fuel source okay the the, the drive is not the actual um there's no oh what is it there's no combustion moving the 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 thing forward yeah it's actually removing or creating a vacuum in the front of the thing. So since there's no combustion going forward, there's like with combustion, there's limits. There's the laws of the universe. There's limits to things. Well, with this vacuum, creating a vacuum, there's no limit. There's nothing pushing this. It's the universe itself pulling this thing. And there's no limit. There's nothing in the universe that says, well, there's a limit to a vacuum, the strength that a vacuum has or the speed that a vacuum can pull something through space. There's, is there a limit? Maybe maybe the speed of light, you know what I'm saying? But maybe not. Maybe the speed of, not the speed of sound, definitely not the speed of sound, so you don't hear nothing in space. But you know what I'm saying? Think about that, that's crazy. And it, that's why it's very similar to warp drive, because when you think about warp drive, it's like, that's a, kind of close. It's like, wait. It's very close. You're, it's... you're moving the universe around, and that's kind of, you're manipulating the universe in front of the ship in order to pull the ship forward instead of pushing the ship from behind through the universe. You know what I'm saying? You're altering it's, the the the, uh, yeah. the vacuum of the universe in front of the ship. It's just fucking insane shit. It is. I'm pretty sure that's what I've heard about. If I'm wrong, I want somebody out there to tell me what the hell technology I'm talking about because I know for a fact I've seen that technology and recently that's why I'm thinking that that's the M drive. But I I'm not 100% sure, so maybe I'm wrong. But Technology I'm pretty sure is based on the electromagnetic drive or M-drive. Science behind the M-drive is complicated, but the basic idea is to convert electrical energy into thrust without propellant, which should be impossible because it violates the laws of conservation and, mo yeah, conservation and momentum. Okay, so maybe I just gave the fucking stupid man's explanation of it, but it, I think I was close to right. I think. I think. I'm trying to get to the... Point where they actually all right. explain. All right, real quick before you before you go on, right? Is warp drive? This is what my I basically my my thought on it that I gave for the week is is warp drive really almost here? And if so, what does that mean in relation to the billions of Goldilocks planets out there? Will and can we start becoming a multi-planet species? I think we can. With M drive, we can become a multi-planet species. But I don't. But I don't overnight. think we should until we learn how to t properly take care of a planet. And here's my next next question: How does M drive affect when we start getting up to close to light speed or even half of light speed? How does light drive start to affect the passage of time for any any um, travelers on the the ship that the M drive is powering and and propelling? What is the passage of, because I don't know if you've heard about the passage of time, how um, that they've sent up, I think they sent up a watch up in space. They shot a, a watch up in space or had a watch up in orbit. Yeah, 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 no. They clicked two watches, right? Okay. One watch down on fucking, one stop watch down on Earth and one stop watch in space. And let them do a complete orbit around the planet or some shit like that or let 24 hours pass by. 
but the 24 hours that the what do you call it, clock in space took 24 hours to go around the planet right but in that 24 hours that it went around the planet it actually experienced like literally like a tenth of a millisecond more time there was a tenth of a millisecond more on that clock and they were both perfectly timed and perfectly accurate clocks so it registered a tenth of a millisecond or maybe even less than that more for the space clock because the space clock was moving through space hmm exactly the the action of moving through space actually affects the passage of time believe it or not and it, it's very ever so slightly like the slight is like milli 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 millisecond like it happens to us almost every single day but we don't notice it another thing right i don't th- maybe we touched on this on one of the earlier ones this just remind me of this and i don't know why i want to touch on it All is right. did you know that your mind is literally creating a good major chunk of what you see every day that your mind and not not in the new age way is where your thoughts create your reality and and or even in the way that your brain inputs signals from your eyeballs and then interprets them and and you put that picture together inside of your brain now um or inter- interprets light from your eyeballs sorry not signals um did you know that every single time you change your your line of vision that from this point all right look right i'm looking at this battery right here and i'm going to go to looking at this arizona can right here which i um i my a girl that me and my girlfriend graduated with in high school her mom designed that can really that does that painting or that's her painting all right nice. anyway right i'm looking no at this Mimsy, battery you've been good now go Mimsy. away hey i'm gonna get your boy who the boss around here? I'm the boss around here, see? Yeah, see? I'm the boss. All right. What? Pay attention. Fuck the cat. He's going to try and get in the cat. Hey, get down. Get out of here, dude. You get out of here till the show's over. We're almost done. Look. Battery over here to the left. This is for anybody listening on online. Can to the right. Now, I look at this battery, and I look at this can. I look at this battery, and I look at this can. Now, when I go from looking at this can to looking at this battery, literally, okay, the what my eyes see from the time they start to move from the can over to the battery, literally, your mind deletes that. What? Your mind deletes that. And you know what it replaces it with? What? The battery. Isn't that fucked up? That is fucked up. So, but hence, why, and, and if you, like, once you, like, really look into this, I can't remember what it's called, but it is a, a true thing. I found it on, I think, a Vsauce episode or something, and they fully explain it. It's like, holy fuck. And then you start to really, like, you perceive it, and you're like, whoa, that's crazy. That's, it is happening. And it starts to fuck with you because it's like, holy shit, my brain is literally creating, visually creating a big chunk of my day because your eyes are constantly changing your, your point of uh, focus or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. constantly looking around. Every time you look from one thing to another thing to another thing, your eyes are filling in the gaps because going for some reason, and I don't know exactly why, and it's, it's explained in the video I saw, but for some reason, right, the motion or the... the what your eyes see going from this over to that, that, that movement, that like that smear of vision, your brain doesn't want you to see for some reason. Your brain actually, as soon as that happens, once you reach where you're the next thing that you stopped on or whatever you stop on and look at, your brain goes back and deletes all of that, that smear where you weren't looking at anything or you weren't focused on anything and replaces it with the next thing that you were focused on until you move on to something else. And then it does the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again because your brain doesn't want any, your brain doesn't want you to perceive any kind of, any kind of movement and like this and that, you know what I'm saying? Like, because your brain needs to be focused on something. So when it's not focused on something, it's like, 
no, I, I can't do that. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. So when you move from one thing to the next, it deletes the in-between space and replaces it with the next. You know? It's fucking that's crazy, weird. dude. It's fucking crazy. And you really start to realize, once you, like, you, you hear that that's going on or you fucking find out that that's going on, your brain's doing that, you're like, holy shit. It is going on because it's like, and a lot of times you, your eyes blink. You'll, you'll do a blink in between. But it's, you really don't, unless you do this, unless you like look at one thing and then follow your hand over. But you have to keep a focus. If you don't focus, if you move your focus from one point to another point and there's any distance in between, you're, you don't see your eyes. You don't see your eyes shift over and over to that other thing. It's replaced with the other thing. Isn't that weird? Oh, you can try. Trust me, you can try. And you can try and keep your eyes and, and say, oh, no, no. But in all reality, you're keeping a focus. That is fucking weird, You are keeping dude. a focus <laughs> as you move from the one object to the other. You're keeping a focus on the background objects and, and what's in, in front of your eyes as you move over to the other thing. But if you don't literally try and focus, your brain will do exactly what I just told you. Yeah, it's weird. Fucked up shit. That's one reason why people need to check this fucking show out. And on that note, I think we're at fucking like over an hour already. Something like that. Woo! Brian. Wowzers. This is fun. This is fun. All right. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I'm about to look at the camera that's not even there. It doesn't even like exist. Hey, right invisible now. camera. Invisible camera. Oh, uh, we had two invisible cameras today for both shows. Even though the first show, you got to see us for a couple minutes with this pretty sun shining on our faces. Um, it's pretty dark now outside. It is pretty dark. It is. I, I'm Where going outside. Go? I'm going outside because it's probably it's. it was 85 degrees out today. It's probably 75 degrees in my house, and it's probably 70 degrees outside. So I'm going outside to catch some of that cool breeze. Because I see some trees blowing a little bit. No, not really. <laughs> oh, well, it's not, I can guarantee it's not muggy out. It's early spring, dude. Oh, it's mid spring. Yeah. It's not muggy out there. So, uh, everybody, have a great week. Thank you very much for joining us on 3NN29, the Technogenesis episode. I'm sorry if we didn't bring you enough technology um, or enough of the future. I guess if you really need some more future, I'll, I'll tell you that the lab grown hamburger or hamburger meat, whatever you want to call it, lab grown hamburger that in 2013 when it was announced was i believe 110 or 120 thousand dollars to or 130 thousand dollars to be able to buy one of these lab grown hamburgers right wow. huh that's a lot of money it's a lot a of money but now the one lab grown hamburger today 2015 12 bucks so i'm actually going to get a couple maybe i'll get three or four and we'll, we'll have a couple on the show is lab grown hamburgers and I, I told my girlfriend about it. she said ew no i don't want that why would i want and i'm like well, explain to me why you don't want a lab grown because it's grown in a lab ew that's nasty like what and i'm like oh but so we, you'd rather have the murdered cow is it you'd, gmo no, no what are you talking about is it gmo it's lab grown dude yeah well, no, lab grown one. doesn't need to be GMO. What are you talking about? Lab grown? If you're lab grown, okay. Yeah, let, if you're let, creating let. this burger in a lab, what, how do we know that they're not putting? You're thinking of Monsanto in? type of lab. This isn't a lab that's like thinking of putting different things in there. This was a lab that was thinking of a way that we can stop killing cows and that we can stop murdering and the the, the mass murdering that we do of all these animals out there. What is a way that we can stop that from happening? Because people want fucking cheeseburgers and you know what how about vegetarians out there how about a vegetarian who wants some meat but doesn't the reason they're a vegetarian is go. because animals are murdered and they don't want to eat a murdered animal well this is a lab grown cheeseburger it tastes just like a cheeseburger it is meat it tastes just like meat they perfected this thing and it no animal was killed for this hmm. what 12 bucks i'm gonna give it a shot dude i think that that's the future hello that's the future that we can't stifle we really can't That's let a little, shit like still that. little price. Oh, hey, dude, it's still a little weird. Dude, you know it's still what? a little weird. It's oh, yeah, price. but it'll go down. A couple of years, yeah, it'll be like four bucks a burger. Down, You'll see them in the grocery store within five, ten years. That's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah. You know, when you can start having lab-grown vegetarian food that tastes exactly like and basically is exactly like the real thing, but no animal was murdered for it. And just make sure. And you'll feel good. Like, how can you feel bad about the, the eating a burger that really, was made in a lab They're probably going to have good. to perfect the uh, proteins and nutrients that you would get from eating a real burger. Like Dude, eating real meat. The way that I understand it is, I could be wrong, is that basically how they would, how they, and I don't think it's through stem cells, so it's, it's obviously definitely somewhat different, but how they grow limbs how okay. they've gotten almost they've perfected growing limbs or not limbs growing certain 
certain body parts. I think you can get a urethra. I believe there's bladders and is it kidneys? Something else, right? They've perfected all these body parts and basically they perfected all these body parts and they're real body parts. There's no difference. They're literally like, there's not like, other than not having, not being grown in a human body, they're the exact same thing as a human body part. Made up of the exact same thing. So, that is kind of the way I look at the lab grown meat. Is that it's probably the exact same thing, just made in a lab and not grown on a cow. You know, not no cow was murdered and this and that. You know, they figured out how to grow, literally grow meat in a lab. Sounds stupid, but... Better than Sounds Japan's, like the future. Better than Japan's turd burgers. I, I, I still want the Star Trek replicator from the next generation. Yeah, I don't know if we're ever going to get the replicator, Brian, but maybe we will. Maybe we live in the replicator world already. Maybe the universe is a replicator. I just want to be able to walk up to T. T. Earl Grey. Hot. Yeah, that's probably coming sooner than you think, though. Your fridge will be able to do that in 10 years. Technogenesis. All right, thank you, everybody, for joining us on 3 n 29 Check us out, facebook.com slash 3 n podcast, facebook.com slash where we lied to, uh, youtube.com slash where we lied to. You can get a hold of us at 3 n at outlook.com, and find me and Brian on Facebook. We're, we're around Nick Tesla, Brian McFadden. You can find us. On that note, everybody have a great week, and uh, we'll see you for 3 n 30 Thank you very much. See you next week. Peace. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam.